Hey, what's up? I'm Daniel. I'm Jamie from Polaris, and uh, we are here with Rob on Front Row Live. Right. I've been waiting for these guys. I, I listened to the record. Uh, it came up on, on Spotify for me a few months back, and I was like, holy shit, who are these guys? And next thing <laughs> you know, you guys are on tour uh, with Parkway Drive, and you guys are here for the first time in the U.S. Yeah. What's up, man? Like, the tour is done. Like, yeah. Yeah, what was that like? Tonight. It's it's uh, It's... Happened very quickly. It's, yeah. it, like literally, it feels like yesterday that I was in the van going, "Man, we got like another, how many shows? Like like yeah, twenty we five plus looking, shows. This is. I'm like, yeah. oh my god, I don't want to do this anymore. And now yeah. I'm like, oh, I don't want it to stop. Like, <laughs> yeah, I'm, I remember looking and seeing that there was still a full two weeks to go. Yeah. Like a couple of shows in, and I was like, oh, this is amazing. This is going to go satisfied. forever. But yeah, I mean, this is like including because we just did a run directly before this with Gideon and uh, Verils and Chamber. So like, I mean, this is like the longest kind of total run we've ever been on anywhere really so so we've been out here for almost two months so pretty pretty knackered to be honest longest yeah. we've been on the road in yeah, general we're, we're like and stuff home, yeah like at the same time like this is the kind of tour you don't ever want to stop like these shows are, every single show is sick like there's always right. another amazing show to look forward to dude everything's right. so great you guys just announced a major another major tour with architects yes and bear tooth yeah, which is like one insane because they both have records coming out as well so oh, yeah. I mean you know those are gonna be crazy tours yeah, yeah. that was a really oh, yeah. cool thing like being able to announce that on this tour because this tour like before we locked that in we were literally looking at this tour and going when are we ever gonna do anything that even compares to this tour <laughs> yeah, and now it's having something really great like that to look forward to is so nice so we're gonna over there in January and yeah yeah some some real real big stages over there some arenas and stuff so we're so absolutely so my birthday over in somewhere in the middle of Europe yeah in the freezing sure, cold I've never <laughs> seen snow never touched snow so Dude, well, I, I expect I expect a, a snowball to the face from you yep. as a birthday Present, right? we'll, uh, we're going to Scandinavia a little bit, I think, Which as well. So we're seeing January some. Well, so. Yeah, we all let's celebrate in that in that yeah, that month. It's going to be fun. Well, let's talk about the Mortal Coil uh, debut album, but it's, it's such a like it's a heavy ass record. Like you put it on, and there is no time to to take a deep breath. Like it's like you're like <laughs> it's nonstop. Sorry? I don't I don't <laughs> shit. I don't even know how to explain this record. Like. <laughs> But we, wanted to, but we wanted to kind of to kind of carry through, and I think especially as a first record, like we wanted to have a lot of momentum and kind of yeah. carry you through from the beginning of the beginning right through the end, and kind of stay exciting and just keep riffing, kind of thing. So, yeah, have I mean, a just nice, have a nice flow. Overall yeah. throughout the whole thing. But at the same time, like I feel like we were, we were also trying to incorporate a lot of like. Uh, I guess like textural variation and melody right. and stuff into there and like kind of diversify the structure a little bit where we can and just kind of experiment with that a little bit while kind of trying to keep the songs also kind of catchy right. when we can as well. Yeah, with this record, like I, I heard you on another interview saying like you guys were kind of not sure about releasing this record. Like you guys were kind of doubting the record in some way. What, why was that? Uh, we just... I know we, we we got pretty stressed out in the lead up to it. Just it's the internal pressure, it, it, I think. You know, like, yeah. like especially after with the Guild and the Grief did a lot more than we thought it would for, as an EP. Yeah. And so it was like, all right, we we got to follow this up hard now. Yeah. Like, well, I mean, <laughs> yeah, I guess just because our, our EP had done like a lot of things we didn't expect it to do, and right. suddenly like what we foresaw that we could do with the album just like became like such a thing in our head and we're like you know we it just had to be so special and kind of you know i think we we, we definitely like worked ourselves into it into some pretty stressful <laughs> stressful moments there but i mean i think in the end you know it was it was probably worth it because it made us fuss over the small things and make sure that like overall we were, we were really happy with the songs like even if we were doubting them later it's like you know when they were when they were completed right. and concreted there's something really special about them that grabbed us and then i think over that last couple of months we yeah we kind of got a clear head and realized that things are about to go pretty well and since then it's just been amazing so can't, you guys are still kind of in denial that the band is like making it dude i mean the I don't know what making it is but <laughs> this is this is amazing. this is great every day on this tour man yeah, let alone the 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 architects tour that we just announced dude, you know yeah, like it's it's yeah since we released this just like every show every tour just seems to be a little bit bigger and better than the last one and it's like oh my gosh what, what the heck is happening well, also, we're always so loving it like don't get me wrong I'm yeah we're really loving it but it's like wow like it's it's it Insane. really blew, we blew our expectations out of the water man we really found like we have to like take with the these kind of tours take a moment to sit back and kind of actually take a breath and in, and enjoy what we're doing in the moment as well because like right. there's we're always kind of thinking a few months ahead and what's coming up and trying to make sure the plans are stacked up the way we want them to be and then suddenly you got to realize that yeah everything right now is a pretty great moment and yeah and this tour has been full of that just every couple of days we're kind of stopping and going like yo we're still on tour with our favorite bands in the world again like today on so that's like a, a bunch of our favorite bands and our idols and stuff as well it is right. it's yeah. it's ridiculous man it's just really ridiculous dude like yeah yeah <laughs> and, and you know creating this record mortal coil like you guys also did it on your own you know, home studio you guys i mean why do you guys choose to do something like i mean 
doing an EP, okay, you, I can understand that. But doing a full record, like, I feel like that's just intense to, to want to do it at home. Yeah, I mean, it was actually not something we ever really had thought in the past that we would do. We'd always worked in some pretty nice studios and we had yeah. a producer we were working with kind of just out of Sydney that we worked with regularly. The thing with recording the album in a, in a home studio, kind of, it was more of a circumstantial thing rather. It wasn't really a case of us being like, oh, you know, we're trying to experiment with doing something crazy or anything like well, that or, never or break away just... from, you know, producer control or anything weird like that. It was literally like that we... We wanted to work with a couple of engineers and producers from uh, from the US. Right. Um, our friends over in Pennsylvania, Grant, Grant McFarlane and Carson Slovak. And uh, it just worked out kind of monetarily and circumstantially, logistically, way better for us to bring them over to Australia rather than for us to come to the US. Right. So yeah, we wish, and when we looked at that, we didn't want to, it, it didn't make sense budget-wise to then hire a really high-end studio for a month. And right. so we realized that we could actually do everything we needed to do basically in a house. So it kind of worked out to be a really cool experience, built a little, vocal booth in the wardrobe upstairs nice. and uh yeah it was it was it was awesome it was really different so here's the other thing like i understand like maybe a pop punk band doing this at home or or maybe like a, a, a pop artist but a metal band like how do you track something like that at home without you know having neighbors complain and let alone the drums did you guys do that as, as well drums. okay we drums separately, yeah we did drum separately 100 percent. there was yeah. no way that was gonna happen how is how is this happening no way i mean if you found but a house we, that was acoustically good enough to track <laughs> drums in you're a very lucky person but um right? we, we kind of had like done a bit of research on the places we were looking into and at the time funnily enough when we saw this place there was no houses next door or anything okay. when we arrived there there's about like a what was it, like a three to five meter gap and then there was a house that was built which wasn't originally in the photos well, I believe was, wasn't it? Was, I mean there, we were really lucky there was one neighbor but to the next side there was an empty block yeah, and then yeah, directly like, behind us was a like cliff. Kind of space. It was pretty pretty decent like it was, it was all right. And then we're looking overlooking the ocean it was like really amazing little spot and um yeah we didn't get any complaints the house next door I think when we got there was a, it was, a was being used as, as a well, holiday yeah. rental by a group of middle-aged women having like a <laughs> having like a ladies weekend away and they um yeah like, they, 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 what are you guys doing? It was it was really funny but yeah no we we got really lucky with that and also um, yeah, we were able to get away with having Jamie with his high volume scream in the uh, in the upstairs uh, closet, and then we were, you know, all the guitars are done digitally, so it's not like we're running really hot cabs or anything. We're just running straight into it, straight into the computer with an axe effects, and it was uh, it was really really cool way to make an album. Actually, we liked right. it a lot. The layout of the house just really worked really well for it as, as well because you know you don't want to have the guitar tracking bleed into the vocals, yeah, and and like as Daniel said just before, like with the vocal booth, we just layered it like it was just a walk-in wardrobe we layered it with mattresses blankets quilts yeah. pillows everything we yeah. hung up like a sheet in front of it as well as like a bit of a another soundproofing thing and shutting the door like you couldn't hear anything outside okay. even even when they were cranking it downstairs it was great it was perfect yeah, we had perfect. Vocals, vocals going upstairs and guitars going up going on downstairs simultaneously for like the whole record and that was a really really amazing yeah, way to do we, things we like, really lucked out we with that place it actually when yeah we, when we made it work we there were a lot of moments where it got a little hairy where we thought so, like you know we blew up a power converter to run all this american gear the producers <laughs> producers almost weren't allowed to bring their computer over on the plane like so many things happened that almost derailed the whole project but yeah we we definitely had a lot of a lot of little uh, little fix up moments and yeah. get ourselves back on track but it was very cool uh, we got it done and it was it was a really awesome experience very very awesome experience I, I would do it again i'd love to do it again actually maybe one day i'd also recommend it to people as well like a lot of people i think out there you do tend to get in that headspace of that you need to be in a really high-end place but yeah. as a lot of people are demonstrating these days about, you know, yeah you can yeah. when it comes to tracking guitars and vocals and stuff like that you can do that almost anywhere if you have the resources and like the know-how and or even just know somebody who's who can help you out with it. Yeah. yeah. So, do you write yeah. majority of the lyrics? How, how does that work with you guys? Dan, Daniel's our main lyricist. Yeah, yeah. I, I write the majority of the lyrics, and then kind of then I'll bring I'll bring the lyrics to Jamie. I mean, the lyrics are usually written, uh, generally kind of after after the music's pretty complete, or I'll often start throwing kind of little lines that you know little here and there lines over the over the songs that's coming together, and then by the time we have a finished song, kind of helps shape it a little bit, I guess, from, from yeah, that point. Often, yeah, often we'll find that yeah, just a good line here or there might actually influence the structure of the song later on because you know you want you need to do it again or something right. like that, and then it's all kind of happening at the same time. And then by the time we've got a completed song, I'll sit down and kind of try and polish it off, and then usually me and Jamie will get together and fill in the gaps and kind of throw ideas back and forth and tweak the phrasing a lot because Jamie's always yeah. got really good um, you know rhythmic ideas for vocals and knows kind of how his voice is going to sound. With you writing the lyrics, how do you guys go about as far as uh, who's singing, who's screaming? Because there's two vocalists as well, right? Yeah. Jake, so how does Jake's that kind of like work uh, out? Jake's our main like uh, clean vocalist, um, but I, I guess it's more like we, when the song comes together, especially with lyrically, like we kind of just it's more about the feel of the part. Mm -hmm. I mean, 
now we're, that we're pushing on to have me doing a bit more singing as well, it's it's more about like, does this feel like it's going to suit Jake a bit more? Is this got yeah. Jake section? Is this a me section? Is it more of a scream section? Do we want Jake screaming instead of me screaming? It's it's always just it's, a, it's always about the feel and what what feels natural. Like, like yeah, it's never come down to debate of I want to do this part because yeah. I want to yeah. sing it. You know, it's right. with between part, those two. Yeah, no, like, we've, no, we've, we've never done that. <laughs> very much. You know, we'll we'll often track both of them singing a part and yeah. like try it out in different voices for both of the guys and just see what see what what really sticks and how nice. everyone in the band feels. Yeah, and the thing is, you know, sometimes what we think will sound good in one person's voice actually turns out to not be the right choice and we right. we kind of got to do a little experimenting but that's kind of all part of the demo process as well yeah now now that you're kind of trying to sing a little more of the clean vocals like how is that a challenge for you is that something that like you kind of feel comfortable with yeah I'm, i've i've always been able to well, I've, I've done singing for a long time but not as like a main main part in a band like in one of my old bands i was guitarist i did backup screaming and like singing as well but doing it in the front man uh perspective I guess is like it's a bit it's been a bit harder for me to adjust my I don't know how to say it like my not yeah, not, not so much my throat your, but like trying to keep my you know keep your, keep your energy output and exactly. stuff and think about not wearing yeah. yourself down more which is exactly you know, it's yeah because when we first started to get me to do a bit of singing and stuff like my voice was like cutting out heaps halfway for a set and I wouldn't oh, be able to sing a lot of parts that I could normally just whip out if I do do the song straight away and so I've had to kind of condition my voice to get used to doing singing and screaming yeah. for a pr prolonged period of time well, so what we're able to do with that now in the songs like because of how much his voice is strengthened live and stuff as well is like it's really changed how what how we can fit the two the two guys in vocally throughout the song because right. before we would actually be somewhat limited by you know we can't have Jamie scream here because he'll wear his voice out for the next part right. or something like that so but what's I been I mean you got to consider a lot yeah, more now we had we yeah. had to actually think about that but actually what's been great even though he is singing more like just because his voice and like kind of live technique has developed a lot over the last year or so of more intensive touring like now we actually have more freedom if anything um, because he's just just able to jump between the two better which is amazing so it's especially over the past few years of touring my, my voice I've noticed my voice has changed a lot and especially in the li live aspect as well which is really interesting like like yeah cool we can actually try these kind of things that we've never been able to do in in, in your music which is cool so. so so is it changing to benefit you guys for for new things or is it also yeah. challenging you at the same time I mean like the, the amount of clean vocals we were able to incorporate from Jamie into the new record was like it was a big step and then I think where we'll go from there yeah. um, is only gonna be more of that and mixing it in you guys have done a lot of festivals you guys are doing a lot of tours now so um, does, is that changing your mindset when you guys go back into the studio to write or if you guys are writing right now does that change your mindset on how to create music because you're considering of these fans like you're doing you're, you guys are doing big shows like you're not doing smaller it's, it's like you gotta think of. yeah I think I think we do like and I think I think that's always been our goal though I wouldn't say it's changed how we see it it's almost yeah. just focused it because we we always from the beginning we were trying to write music that we thought would sound good in these big rooms it would make a lot of people move like that right. was kind of always our goal is we want stuff or our riffs that people can jump up and down to and we want to write as it's kind of always been a big part of a part of our sound and then I think yeah you, you the more you experience that you, you do kind of get addicted to that rush of making a lot of people move so you tend to you do you want to amplify it a little bit but I think we've we've just tried to make sure we don't dumb down the the playing for that because yeah. I think there is a point where you see bands sometimes will really you know dumb down the technique in their songs or I mean not that that's always a bad thing but it's just sometimes you can lose a bit of the the challenging aspects of, of the riffs and stuff and we still kind of want to want to keep it interesting and keep it fun to play for you as well I think it's it kind of affected the way we write the vocals for sure just because like it was like when we um, when uh, we did the remedy in the studio and I yeah. Daniel like uh, suggested like the first verse it was really cool ebby flowy like this really cool vibe right. to it and we we laid it down and I just and when we were gonna move on I was like can we just try and run this and I'll see if I can actually do this in one take because I may not be able to do this yeah, live because it was just I didn't really have a chance to breathe and yeah. it's um and I guess like, like as you said like with touring with so many bands and playing a lot of festivals and stuff with so many bands like you definitely do gain a lot of uh, inspiration from seeing so many different acts and so many right. genres of music uh, for, especially over such a short period of time as well like it you know like, oh that's kind of cool we should do something kind of like that I like how that translates live we don't do anything like that like yeah, the shit that we've learned being on this tour as well like seeing stuff and I mean you know you you, you, tr you got to stay true to what, what you've always written and stuff like that but then when you see some of these amazing live bands on like Parkway and ABR and Prada and the kind of stuff they manage to work into their set and the way they construct their parts to really just like go hard live you watch that and you go you can you can learn a lot from being around these kind of bands which is definitely probably going to play into our writing as well yeah what, what song do you guys feel challenged you guys in the studio? Was it Remedy or... Challenged in the studio? Yeah, like, oh. or creating, not necessarily Ooh, in the studio. Yeah, but Remedy, Remedy, the vocals, that's probably the latest we've ever left vocals to be written in the studio. We went in there and... We didn't really have 
that, 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 that song was written late instrumentally and even later like all the vocals were written pretty much a couple of days before yeah. and it was very spitballing but that kind of made it kind of spontaneous and yeah. fun and we ended up with some really cool shit because of that either that or consume because that song almost didn't get finished yeah. Yeah. and that again funny like yeah. the, those those two songs are big challenges they've kind of been the the crowd favorites right. which is really nice because it means it was worth worth the uh all the headache you know right. two, two songs for me that, uh, that I can off the top of my head cha challenging wise would have been uh, Dust A Day just because that's probably been the first song where I'm actually singing singing and, it, and it's a, such a main point on me and we wanted it to just really feel natural and not too not too whiny and not too right. this and not too that and I spent a lot of time on that, that yeah. those two verses yeah. trying to get the oh, yeah. melody right yeah. and get, create the feeling right and everything um, you make your voice croak you're like I'm like, I'm like, my, my voice, my voice yeah, doesn't croak like that. He's like, just do it. I feel so bad for what I put you through in that song. I'm hey, so sorry. Um, and and also, um, why do you trust him with the writing, man? Like, <laughs> and uh, I still don't know. <laughs> um, Crooked Path as well. Yeah. Crooked Path is a, is a very uh, vocally straining song. Very busy. Um, very very busy, and especially like those two like rappy verse parts was something that I haven't really done before. So trying to incorporate up that kind of not so spoken but still screaming but not too intense screaming and this really rappy kind of yeah. thing which is something I'm not really used to doing was kind of it, like bouncy parts in on it, this and, yeah. you keep kind of flowing around and yeah, yeah I mean it was definitely a question whether of how it would work trying, at the to, time. trying to get the parts and I just, are you sure this sounds okay like it just but it, it, it felt good it, it matched right. it like yeah I want to I do a bit more of that kind of stuff on yeah. future stuff right. future music yeah hell yeah now that now that this tour is, is wrapping, you guys are getting ready for the next one. What else can we expect music-wise? Are you guys focused on on giving this album as much life as possible, or are you guys already thinking about the next one? Say, kind of both of those yeah, things. Of yeah. yeah, I mean, we've we like as this year's gone on, we've become aware that just like you know that we can get a fair bit of longevity out of this album. I think yeah. you know a lot of new people are still finding out about it, and it seems like the tours are just getting better and more exciting and stuff. Like this, the one we're going over with Architects in Europe will be our third time in Europe, and each time has just been cooler so um, yeah. Last, yeah I think you know we, we're definitely we definitely want to want to get everything we can out of the record but we don't want to hold on too long before right. we get something new out so I think as soon as we get home it's kind of kicking into like a little bit more of a riding period that'll that'll yeah. go for the yeah. the foreseeable future until right. we, until we hit the studio and then we'll be kind of grinding along the road I think guys well congratulations with this record congratulations with all the tours that are just coming your way now i'm telling you this record is opening doors so <laughs> Thank you like i'm glad much. you guys Thank are finally here much. in the states so you guys be sure uh to check out polaris their new album is out now it's called the mortal coil and check them out on tour architects tour coming soon this tour just wrapped thanks for watching here on front row live we'll see you at the show